Today, we're gonna to make some money mowing lawns running a land team business. Here's all the information. This client has their home for sale. It's at a very steep hill. It's hard to actually access it with the trailer you're gonna see in just a moment. We're mowing and weeding this property and we're actually spraying for them as well as part of the weeding service. There's the turf square footage. You can see it's really small. There's just a little bit in the front lawn and then a little bit of backyard lawn under 1500 square feet. Hey everyone, it's Mike Andes here at landscapebusinesscourse.com and today we are mowing lawns and the next job we're about to do is at the very top of this hill. Unfortunately, there's nowhere to turn around with a big trailer. This is, again is why you might think about doing trailerless setup. Is this thing in front of us, there's no turnaround and all the driveways are blocked with cars. So we're either going to have to walk up with the push mower or drive this massive monstrosity up and back it back down. So we're going to drive up and see what happens. No trailer brakes. Here we go. See, so usually I'd turn around in here. And they're both blocked. Oh, there is space up here. Let's go. Good choice. Either this person is selling their house or publicly puts their phone number next to the road. Okay, so this is when we are mowing the lawn. The small front and backyard, it's gonna be a push mow. Property cleanup is gonna be, includes two front garden beds on either side of the driveway and gravel under the back deck. Pull large weeds, spot spray areas of heavy weed growth, remove leaves and debris. Okay, so on this one we got 30 minutes for the mow, 15 minutes for the bed maintenance, and let's start now. Boom. You knew I wasn't gonna let you down. We're gonna do some voiceover as usual and learn how to make some money mowing lawns, doing landscaping. Today we're gonna to be talking about the trailer, why we try to get away from the enclosed trailers and some of the downsides. But again, as I've always said, you gotta match your equipment setup to the type of property that you have. I really recommend if you're just getting started or you're small, start with the smaller lawns because you don't have to get as big a truck. You don't have to get a, a half ton or a three quarter ton or a full ton pickup to haul a massive trailer around. Uh, you can even get like a Ford Ranger or a Colorado, it's not even a, a half ton pickup. Uh, that smaller truck allows you to have a smaller mower, which has less liability, less maintenance and less cost for maintenance, like a hydro oil filter and hydro oil change and the belts on a big zero turn cost a lot more than this little machine here, this $1,200 Honda commercial. Yes, it's gonna limit you in terms of how many lawns you can do potentially in your market, but in my mind, you gotta look at the cost per hour of overhead to operate a specific setup. With a tiny mower, small equipment, your cost per hour of maintenance, your cost per hour of fuel, your cost per hour of overhead dramatically decreases. So if I'm going to get a bigger mower, for me, I wanna make sure that 40% of my lawns actually need the equipment. So that way, asset utilization, what that means is like I'm actually using the asset. It's not just sitting there doing nothing. That's dead money, and if I'm gonna do a capital expenditure in the form of a truck, a trailer, equipment, I wanna make sure I'm actually using it and it's making me money. That's how I can maximize the ROI on that purchase. So when you look at different setups, in your lawn care business, as you grow, you potentially might have a setup that has a big zero turn and is doing all the perimeter, like the outside county properties of your route, and then have a smaller setup that has less overhead, less equipment, less need for skilled laborers, etc. that can do the, maybe downtown, the smaller lawns like this one that are smaller square footage. Because at the end of the day, you've got to look at what that mower is actually going to cost you per hour, what that setup is going to cost you. For example, if we break down just the cost per hour of a zero turn setup, if it's $8,000 for the acquisition cost and you run it for 15,000 hours, that means $5.33 per hour is really going toward just purchasing the equipment, let alone, you know, let's say like $4 per hour for fuel, a dollar per hour for insurance, a couple dollars per hour for maintenance. All right, so we're at this property and part of our mowing service and weekly service here is pulling weeds. So this property just recently got bark mulch. So this is what we call medium brown bark. It has a little bit chunkier of uh, the bark uh, kind of chunks in there. Uh, however, 
This is a great upsell for your mowing customers. Even though we focus on recurring services and basic services, when you get a mowing client, the goal is to upsell them as many services as possible so you increase their lifetime value. So for example, if we mow this lawn and we charge them, I think it's $50 for this service today or $60 for this service today. If I do that, say 30 times in the year, that's gonna be, what, $1,800? 860 times there, like yeah, $1,800. But if I can get uh, one mulch install, I might get another $1,500 from this client, and they just went from an $1,800 $1, a month to all or $1,800 a year, all the way to over $3,000 in terms of the value of the client, without having to go get more customers. So upselling and getting more lifetime value and annual value from each customer is imperative to growing the business. If you're wondering what you need to get started in terms of equipment, you don't need a trailer, you don't need a bunch of mowers, you literally need a bucket some gloves and you can pull weeds. That's really all you need. And honestly, you don't even need those things. So there's no excuses why you can't get started. Pulling weeds is definitely where we get our, the most of our call back. So being thorough with that's really important. It's almost honestly the hardest thing to train new hires on in being really efficient as well as just really maniacal about getting every single weed. Most of our callbacks, most of our complaints are from missed weeding. So we really have had to buckle down on that, especially with P4P, pay for performance, where our team is trying to go as quickly as possible. They can't cut the corners when it comes to weeding. Speaking of cutting corners, uh, we have what we call a profit sharing program for our frontline staff. We've implemented this the past couple of years and it's really, really worked wonders for our team culture, as well as the ability for the team to make more money and earn that money through their hard work and being efficient out in the field. So even this past week at the local shop, the frontline employees, guys out in the mowing crews and landscape crews, they made $651 for this past quarterly profit sharing. And if you're gonna do profit sharing, in my mind, you have to have what's called open book management, which means you share the numbers and you actually share where the business is making money, revenues and profits and losses each month, staying in touch with them and actually being transparent with all the numbers of the business. You can't like hide what your hourly rate is or how much you're making on a job because otherwise they're just, they're just not going to trust you when you come up with a profit sharing number. They're just gonna think you literally pull it out of the thin air and are making stuff up and they're gonna wonder why it goes up and why it goes down. You wanna give them as much context as possible. In my opinion, if you want an employee to think like an owner, they need two things. They need the information like an owner, that comes in the form of open book management and them seeing the numbers, and then they need to be compensated like an owner. This comes in the form of pay for performance, where they get more money, the harder they work, and the more efficiently they actually produce. So a lot of times people are worried about, well, what happens if I'm making a bunch of money on open book management? They're gonna see I make all this money. Then you gotta make sure you give them upward mobility to make the same amount of money as you. All right, so this house is for sale. I can tell there's a key box on the front door. I wanna talk about real quickly, when it comes to your lawn mowing customers, there's only a couple different type of customers you can get. Number one is the customer that is, for the very first time, getting service. Usually these people get service at the beginning of the year. They're like, you know what? Don't wanna get the mower out of the front, out of the garage. It's not working, I'm just gonna hire someone. That's the first customer. Next customer is the disgruntled customer, the person who is unsatisfied with their existing provider and is looking for somebody else. That's the second one. The third one is when people move. You know, it's always been said that when, there's always a few times in people's lives where they spend money irrationally. One is when they die, one is when they get married, one is when they have a kid. The only one, in my mind, is when they sell their house. So there's a reason why we were able to sell them this mulch installation and why they're obviously getting weeding and spraying and all the rest of it, because they're selling their house. So, again, opportunity. If you're in this kind of uh, real estate market right now where everything is buying and selling and really quickly, if you want to optimize the value of their property, it's a great way to upsell them on a property cleanup, installing mulch, getting their beds uh, cleaned out and their bushes trimmed, money in the bank. A couple drawbacks about the enclosed trailers. We love them for one reason. These bad boys on the side, it's like a massive moving billboard. You got Max, our mascot, on the side. You got 14 feet of absolute billboard, massive lettering, etc. cetera. Uh, things we don't like about it though is partly just the construction. For example, look at this fender. It's been hit by something because it sticks out and has, has now been, you can actually see they've actually had to fix this and put some silicone in here to prevent any sort of water getting through. Uh, these tires, they're the, the tandem axles, we go through like one set a year at least just because they're tandem and they'll wear a lot faster. You got brakes on here, you got grease points on these tire 
obviously. Um, but this sheet metal, it's like the thinnest stuff ever given to mankind. And it gets dented, it gets scratched, especially if it's white like this. Uh, but again, I wouldn't even paint it due to the fact that you know, screws come out, it gets dented, you gotta fix it, now you're patching a color. So I love the I love the billboard, but there's things that we just, you know, there's just a lot of wear and tear. For example, these cables here on the side, these are the draw cables for the back gate. Helps, you know, it has a coil up here for tension to be able to lift this gate up a lot easier. However, if you have a zero turn coming in and out of this every day, this one's gone, and literally this happens like three times a year. All it takes is someone backing up the zero turn. We have the bagger on it, so it sticks out like 12 inches on this side. So as you can see, we hit it. Um, and now it's almost beyond repair. So this is again why we switched to trailer setups. So we get the ramp rack. There's uh, a mow and go systems.com. You can check those out. This is why we're trying to move that direction because the, the construction of these just not built for a thousand pound zero turn coming in and out of here 50 times a day. You got the back, this, uh, the boards here on the, uh, door itself, the ramp itself, already starting to buckle again, just under the weight. You got you got to grease these fittings, and, and just overall, it's just not built for this stuff. Yes, you could buy a ten thousand dollar one or upgrade. Like for example, what we did is we've doubled the plywood in the flooring here because we have so much moisture and grass and all the rest of it. The flooring of this would actually over time start to buckle and kind of a. Uh, depress under the weight of everything or the weight of the mower was. So we actually put a double thing of plywood. But again, it's just lots of maintenance. And again, it contributes to the fact why we're moving to trailerless. And you can get a zero turn in a trailerless. You just can't bag clippings. And that's why we have to have this trailer to hold this thing around so we can keep the bed of the truck open for cl uh, collecting clippings. I'm gonna go ahead and spray some weeds now. It's kind of like driving a Tesla and then trying to go back to a Toyota or a Honda. Once you've seen one of the battery powered backpack sprayers, you just feel stupid using this handle to pump the thing. We were down in Georgia at one of our locations and Jesse, one of the employees down there was using, oh my goodness, see now. You want some help? Not only did I feel stupid, I look stupid. All right, there we go. Um, he was using one of the battery powered ones. They look legit. None of this garbage going on all day. By the way, Danny, on our last video, someone called us Sally's and said we should go back to our office jobs. So we've been relegated to the office. <laughs> Well, how do you grow your business? How do you get more customers? All the rest of it. One of the best things I recommend is getting a website made for your business. Most customers right now are coming from our online presence. Most of our leads do not come through phone call. They actually come through online request forms, people emailing, etc. And in my mind, what happened in 2020 with the pandemic and people staying at home, it forced our target de demographic, that 50 and up year old market, to actually start using technology. They're actually on Facebook now. They watch YouTube videos. They might even be on Instagram. So the fact of the matter is that our target market that perhaps in the past didn't have an email, you know, didn't want to be on social media, what happened in 2020 is it accelerated the social media and online acceptance of that in, into our older demographic of customers that we are going after. What that means is we need to be at where our customer eyeballs are at. And if they're on Facebook, we need to be there. So if you're gonna run ads in all those online platforms like Nextdoor and Facebook and YouTube and Google, for example, you need to make sure that you can actually link them to a good looking website. Yes, you can make a website for, on Wix or Weebly for like 40, 50 bucks a month, really cheap, design it yourself. And I really think your budget for your website really depends on the desired size that you want the business to grow to and the price and really what you wanna charge. Like, are you gonna be a premium service? If you are, you better make sure that that website looks premium because that's one of the best ways to brand and have first impressions is a great website. If you're gonna have you know massive goals to expand and grow, you might have to pay five, ten thousand $10,000 for someone to build you a one-time website. I'm against that simply due to the fact that now you don't have any control over that. You cannot change it, make adaptations, uh, because they just build it one time and they leave it, you know, build it and forget about it. At longcurwebdesign.com, we build your websites $399 per month, yes. However, you can do unlimited changes and we constantly are changing the SEO based upon the algorithm Google is changing.
Alrighty, so finished that lawn. Let's see what our time looks like. So that price probably property specifically we had, let's see here, we had 45 minutes. We got it in 42 minutes. Stop job, are they complete? Yes. All right, so let's go ahead and do the math. So on this property we had 45 minutes. So 45, divide that by 60 minutes in an hour equals we had 0.75 or three quarters of a budgeted hour. We multiplied that by our hourly rate, which is $80 per hour on these type of services, $60. So we made $60 in about, what did I say, 42 minutes? Not too bad. So hopefully that was helpful for all of you. Again, this is not to bag on these enclosed trailers. I like them, but again, just a lot of maintenance on these bad boys. And if I can get to a trailer set up and I don't have to bag clippings, I just don't see the reason why you need this big trailer unless you're doing it for advertising. Another thing you might wanna do is get a box truck. That way you have the enclosed ability of it. You can lock it up, but you don't have to deal with hauling a trailer, having all the extra tires, all the things we've talked about, the thin sheet metal, it's a pain in the neck. I'm Mike Candies, LandscapeBusinessCourse.com. We'll see you in the next job. Hey, it's Mike here. If you're part of the 10% of people who actually got to the end of the video, congratulations. And also, you should definitely make sure you follow me on TikTok and Instagram. I'm always posting there every single day, and we actually show the prices of the jobs that we do in short form videos. So check it out.